Hello everybody, it's Tim again here with my third video in my 69 favorite horror films. Um, just to kick it off here with uh, another zombie film. Uh, last, uh, at the end of my last video, I talked about Dawn of the Dead. At the beginning of this video, I'm going to be talking about Day of the Dead. Now, Day of the Dead, I don't think it's as good as Nine Living Dead, but I do enjoy it more on, on just like, I mean, I just enjoy the film more. Than Night of the Living Dead because I've watched it more times and I didn't see Night of the Living Dead until I was older. But I still think Night of the Living Dead is a better film, but I do enjoy watching this film more. Just for really one one thing in this film makes me really enjoy this film like so much. It's what that makes me have more fun with it than I do with Night of the Living Dead, despite the fact that I know Night's a better movie. And that's the character of Captain Rhodes in the film. The the character is just a, a huge dick. I mean he's just such a dick that his lines it even his lines, just like, I mean, his lines alone are just like such asshole lines in the film, and they're so well written just to show what a, a dick this character is. That it, I just love this guy, I just love to hate him. And just like some of the shit he says is so fun, so fucking funny that I just can't get enough of it. And that's what makes me watch this movie over and over, is just the interaction between the characters. This movie go, is closer to Night of the Living Dead than Don was. And uh, in this film, it's pretty much just like a little group of characters who are living underground uh, from away from the zombie uh, ep epidemic. And they can't seem to get along with each other. And uh, Captain Rhodes is like the leader of the military group. And uh, he's like, uh, you better start showing me some results, people. Uh, he's uh, <laughs> He keeps saying goofy, uh, well, not goofy, but uh, funny shit all the time. He's like, uh, are you guys just in there jerking each other off? And shit like that, and he's like, uh, I, he, he's talking to one of the characters in the film called Dr. Frankenstein. I'm running this monkey farm now, Frankenstein, and I want to know what the fuck you're doing with my time. And just that shit alone, that line alone right there, just makes me not be able to get enough of this film. I love this film. Um, it's not as good as Don. I, don't, I think Don is far superior to this film, but I still think this film is really good and definitely a really fun time. It's the weakest of the original three films. But for me, it'll be my, it's always going to be my second favorite of the original three films and of the George, the George Romero films in general, or uh, at least of his zombie films, because I'm just I grew up watching this movie more, and I didn't watch Night until a way later, and I and even though Night's a better film, I just have more fun with this film, just more fun with the characters in this film. I just get more enjoyment out of the, watching the characters in this film than I do the characters in Night. Um. Like the character of the helicopter pilot, and of course the character of Rhodes. Rhodes, uh, I can't stress enough. The, the movie is worth watching just for, for his performance alone, uh, just because the character is just so over the top, like such an over the top asshole. Um, and how he just won't cooperate with any, he just won't cooperate with the scientists at all, and just treats him like shit through the whole movie. And just talks bad about him and puts him down and everything, all that shit. And another another reason to really watch this film is, I mean, I, that I really like this film is because of the character of Bub and his relationship with the scientist in the film, nicknamed Doctor Frankenstein. Um, just his relationship with him and how Bub's like learning like human traits again and stuff, and how him and the uh, Doctor Frankenstein become friends in the film. It's just a, a really uh, interesting character arc. For the character of Bub, like how he becomes more human and stuff, and well, learns human traits anyway. And uh, just that is something that I really haven't seen in a lot of other zombie films. And I really think it helps elevate this film up to being a really fun time and a really uh, fun movie to watch. It's darker than Dawn and has a lot less comedy. And it has, unless you count the more darker comedy coming from the character of Rhodes, just because he's such an over the top asshole that he's hilarious. But if you prefer the style of Dawn to the style of Night, uh, you'll probably be disappointed with this film. But if you're more open-minded and, and just see this film as in a different style than Dawn, then I think you will really enjoy this film just like I did. Now we move on to Tales from the Crypt presents Demon Knight, which is one of my definite uh, top ten favorite horror films. This would be in my top ten if the films were in order, in any kind of order. But I just felt with 69 films, I felt why well, I spend all that time putting them in order instead of just going for it. Plus, I waited too long. I waited to like almost to the last minute to do this video for my Christmas special, so I waited kind of too long to put all these films. I mean, I would have needed more time to put all these films in order, and I waited too long. 
But anyway, just to continue on with this film right here, Tales from the Crypt presents Demon Knight Rocks. I love this film. It has a kick-ass heavy metal soundtrack that completely rules. Uh, the Crypt Keeper, I love the Crypt Keeper. The puppet looks better here and better animated and more expensive looking than he did in the television series, which I also love the television series. Huge fan of the series. Um, what makes this movie so good is Billy Zane. Billy Zane steals the show in this film. Billy Zane is awesome in this film as the character of the Collector who is looking for this key that has like the blood of Jesus in it and that he wants to use this key and there's like seven keys and the, the, the demons want to get the keys so they can use them to like control the universe. So that right there is like a pretty like fucking epic plot if you really think about it. And they basically use this idea to make it like a one night stand survival horror kind of thing where it's like a group of people trapped in a house or a motel. Uh, and they got you got you just basically got to see which one of them will make it out. You know, will survive the night till tomorrow. William Sadler also plays in the film. Now, William Sadler is an actor I do like as well, and uh, he's an underrated actor. Um, he's been in a lot of good stuff, and he is a good actor. And I wish he would get more work. And uh, he's really great in the film too, as the film's hero. Uh, Jada Pinkett Smith is in this film. Uh, she's fine as well. Uh, Dick Miller is also in this film, who is in Gremlins. He plays like an uh, an alcoholic guy named Uncle Willie. Uh, he's fine as well. Uh, the Crypt Keeper, voiced by John Cassier, I believe, is one. His voice is is terrific. He's once again fine. And the Crypt Keeper segments of the film are really well done and really fun to watch. And this is just a terrific film. And with just the idea of like a key with like the blood of Jesus in it that protects you from demons, is just a cool idea. I just I like that idea. And a bunch of people, like a survival horror kind of story, like with a bunch of people surviving or trying to survive in a in a house or a hotel or wherever, is always fun to watch if done right. Um, and just like the stuff Billy Zane does in the film is just like so funny, and he makes this film so worth watching. Uh, like at the beginning of the film, he like jumps out the window at the hotel, and he like jerks off his hat and goes, "I'm tired of this cowboy shit." You bunch of whole dumb, dumb something. He says something like, "You bunch of whole dumb, tired, dead motherfuckers," or something like that. <laughs> but uh, Billy Zane is the highlight of this film. He's just so fun to watch. Uh, there's even another scene where he appears as a bartender. He's like giving Uncle Willie like a hallucination. He like uh, bribes, tries to bribe like each one of the characters to like, I guess, giving up their soul, and then they become demons, uh, and they become in league with him. And he like appears as a bartender and he's like, uh, suck this one down, Uncle Willie. <laughs> he's wearing like shades. Uh, it's, he's, the, he's the highlight of the film. He's the best part. He totally steals the movie. I love this film. Uh, this is another film that I don't watch uh, as much as Creep Show or Trick or Treat or the original Halloween on Halloween. But this is, a de this is definitely another film that I do love to watch on Halloween as well. I get a kick out of this film and the Tales from the Crypt franchise in general. I really would love to see another Tales from the Crypt movie. What Devil of Blood is decent. It's not absolutely horrible, but it's it's a, it's decent. It is a big step down from this film, but it's at least a, a decent film. Uh, the Ritual film, which wasn't even it's not even really a Tales from the Crypt film, but kind of is at the same time. Uh, for Ritual, uh, it's just passable. It's not absolutely horrible, but it's only barely passable. I would recommend skipping it unless you're, uh, unless you uh, just want to see like a uh, another Tales from the Crypt movie and like really just hunger for one and want to see it because you're a big fan of Tales from the Crypt like me and just watch it anyway like I did. But I would love to see another Tales from the Crypt movie. Uh, EC Comics has so many terrific stories. I would love to see adapted uh, into films or Tales from the Crypt style films. But I would just love to see another Tales from the Crypt film. But just for this film right here, I love this film. This film is such a is such a great it's just such great fun to watch. And the, the whole idea where you gotta like shoot the demons in the eyeballs or whatever to uh to to destroy them. Uh, and you got like this green light that like shoots out of their eyes. It's just so cool. And the special effects in the film are done really well. Um and at the end of it when like uh Billy Zane like fucking gets uh some of the blood like sp uh, he gets it spit on him on his face and he like uh see the skin starts melting off. And he fucking turns into like this big giant demon wing bat creature. Uh, that was awesome. And then he blows up. That was a really cool badass way to end the movie. And then the heavy metal soundtrack plays through the credits. And this film right here just rocks. Uh, this film. I, I can't stress enough that this film is just cool as all hell. I wouldn't really say it's scary. But it's just a lot of fun and really cool to watch. 
and Billy Zane is just funny and entertaining as fuck in this film. Uh, I would say that the film probably would be scarier to, scarier to younger audiences, but I would say older horror fan audiences probably wouldn't be really scared of this film at all. I would say it'd be scarier to like younger kids or people like that, or people who haven't watched a whole lot of horror films. But for older audiences and uh, older people who have watched a lot of horror films, I really don't think this film will scare you, but I think it will be really fucking entertaining. And for a final note on Demon Knight, it's an incredibly fun film, and I definitely recommend that people check it out. And if you're a comic book fan and you like horror comics, check it out. And if you're a Tales from the Crypt fan, I'm really surprised if you haven't seen this already. But if you're a horror movie fan, I definitely say uh, this is one crypt worth opening. <laughs> Next, we get into Dario Argento's Demons here, which is another one of my favorites. I didn't see this film till I was much older like about 17 or 18, but when I saw this film, I got such a kick out of it that it just became one of my favorites automatically. Uh, there's stuff in this film that really makes no sense, that just kind of happens, like just to happen, but uh, when once it gets to like the actual plot or gets into the story uh, with the demons like attacking in the theater and the characters like having to fight the demons and everything, that right there is just so much fun when it happens. That to be honest, any kind of little plot elements that don't are that are weak or story elements, I mean that are weak, you just really honestly don't give a fuck. You get like this gimp looking guy in the film. Uh it's like a stereotypical pimp. And uh he's like stabbing the demons with his switchblade or whatever. And it's like so silly, but it's so fun at the same time. This film is like B horror movie gold right here. If anyone hasn't seen this film, I recommend seeing this film just for the outrageousness of it and for the silliness of it. I really do not think you'll be disappointed. I wouldn't say that this film um, is put together like story-wise completely well, but I would say that it's so much fun and just such a blast to watch that it more than makes up for anything or any problems in this film. Uh, I did see the sequel. I didn't think Demons 2 was near as good as this film, but I do uh, I do really love this film, and this film right here is just so much fun. Once again, this is another popcorn movie as far as horror fans go, in my opinion. I do think horror fans would have a blast watching this with some popcorn on a Friday or Saturday night. Next up, we have The Dentist here. Uh, I'm going to start going through these films rather quick just because there's so fucking many of them, but just to go into The Dentist here, I love this film. Uh, Brian Uzena, uh, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, uh, directs this film. Or Uzna, I mean, directs this film. Yeah, Brian Uzna, I think is how you say his name. He directs this film. I like Brian U I like, I, love, I really like Brian Uzna. Uh, he's, uh, he's directed some really, uh, good horror films, in my opinion. But he's also directed some really shitty ones, too. But, uh, but he's been involved with a lot of good ones, though. And this is, uh, on the good side, in my opinion. I really like this film. And the reason is I really like this film is because it's, based, it's a horror story of a killer dentist. Which, going to the dentist is already scary as fuck anyway. So, <laughs> Having a dentist who is a killer who will pull out all your teeth uh, is pretty fucking creepy and scary if you think about it. But uh, the, the dentist stars Corbin Burnson, who does really good here. Um, Corbin Burnson, as an actor, I never thought was really amazing, but seeing him in this film right here, he carries this film so tremendously well that the entire film pretty much relies on him. And when he finds out his wife's cheating on him in the film, it's just so interesting to watch his like spiral into a. Uh, uh, into becoming a, a complete psychopath. He's already unhinged as the movie starts, but when he finds out his wife's cheating on him, it's just in, so interesting to watch him spiral into madness and become more and more crazy. And as he tortures his patients and rips out all their teeth, <laughs> it's just so much fun to watch, and it's just so gruesome to see uh, him rip out uh, the people's teeth and everything, and just the effects of him like ripping out people's teeth and putting clamps in their mouths and opening their mouths so wide. <laughs> that you can just tell it looks like so fucking painful uh... just the effects of that of like the him killing people with different dentist equipment and everything is just done so well this movie is so much fun and it actually has an early role from mark ruffalo i believe actually maybe his first film uh... but yeah this uh... just to end this here with the dentist i'm just gonna start going quick through the through the rest of the films on my list uh... this is a really good film i definitely recommend that you see it and to be honest it's one of the only actual actually one of the only killer dentist movies that I even know of, which is a surprise because you would figure everybody being so scared of the dentist that there would be more, but at least we got one really good one, though. Now we're here with Rob Zombie's masterpiece. Out of all of Rob Zombie's films, this is the one I find the most enjoyable, and this is the one I watch the most. 
This along with House of a Thousand Corpses are the two films I have the most fun with out of all of his films. And I think most people see it that way. Or I think most people uh, choose these, uh, choose this and House of a Thousand Corpses as his two best films, which I agree. Um, his remake of Halloween wasn't a horrible film, but it just wasn't needed and uh, suffered from just a cliche serial killer background for the character of Michael Myers. But anyway, just to talk about this film, I love this film, and no matter what films Rob Zombie will make in the future, uh, if any more, uh, this film right here will always be, uh, a, I think this film will go down as a cult classic. Uh, this film, uh, you, you basically get to follow the, the three main killers from the first film, uh, Sid Haig, Bill Mosley, and Sherry Moon Zombie. All three actors turn in good performances. Sherry Moon Zombie, I think, though, is the weakest of the three, character-wise and acting-wise. Uh, Bill Mosley is my favorite of the three. Uh, Sid Haig would be my favorite of the three because of his clown gimmick, but I don't think it's played up uh, good enough. But uh, Or played up enough, I mean, uh, for my liking. But he does get a really great line in the film where he's talking to this woman, and he goes, now, don't you ever turn your back on a fucking clown when he's talking to you. I love that line. Uh, him and Bill Mosley get the best lines. Sherry, uh, Sherry Moon, she's there. She does good with her role, but uh, Bill Mosley and Sig Haig get the way get way better lines than her. I love Bill Mosley's line in the film. It's like a boy. The next thing you say you better be some brilliant fucking Mark Twain shit, because it's definitely getting chiseled on your tombstone. I just love that. And uh, when Bill Mosley grabs that guy and he goes, uh, "I don't think you get it. I'm calling the shots. Consider me Willy fucking Wonka, and this is my chocolate factory." Those lines right there, are just those are really good lines. Rob Zombie can write, but I think sometimes he just has like so many ideas or like so much shit in his mind that he just wants to do in one film that he just like shoots like a big cum explosion of all that stuff on the screen. I think he would benefit better from letting someone like oversee his script and saying, "Hey, Rob, man, this is kind of fucking stupid." I think he would benefit from that, especially in the film Lords of Salem, which uh, I'm I don't. Either that one or Halloween 2 is his worst film. Uh, Halloween 2 is pretty bad, and I remember Lords of Salem being pretty weak, but I don't remember enough about uh, Lords of Salem to remember whether or not it was worse or better than Halloween 2, but both those films are pretty weak. Uh, as far as his film career goes, I'm giving him one more chance to see how he does with, with one more film, um, if he can redeem himself or not. I'm a pretty much a three-strike-you're-out fan. I mean, a, a three-strikes-you're-out man. But, um... Despite the fact that I didn't really care for his remake of Halloween, I still don't think it was an absolute horrible movie, so I'm willing to let that one kind of slide. But um, his, his Halloween 2, which was more of just like his own thing, that one I thought was pretty shitty, and Lords of Salem is also pretty shitty. So I'm going to give him one more chance. But as far as this film goes, this film is his crowning achievement, and no matter how bad any of his other films will get, or be, or maybe, uh, you never know though. I mean, he could he could make another really good one, but... I still don't think, regardless of what movies he makes in the future, that he will ever be able to top this film right here. Just the ending of this film alone, with the Leonard Skinner song playing, like, uh, over the killers driving straight into the police and getting shot out of hell, is just epic. That ending right there uh, cranks this movie up to, uh, to what I think will probably make this movie a classic in years to come for horror fans. So, um... And just the cast, also the cast, they're just casted so perfectly. Despite Sherry Moon being the weakest of the three killers, I still think she holds her own pretty well and has some decent, and does some decent to okay acting. But uh, Sig Haig and Bill Mosley will be will always be my favorites of the three main killers. Uh, and William Forsythe is the sheriff. He's terrific as well as the vengeful sheriff. This movie bars elements from a lot of older horror films, but Rob, Rob Zombie tends to do that with a lot of his films. But as long as he makes something really cool and creative out of it, uh, I, I honestly think that it's fine. As long as he does his own spin on it. But just to finish off with The Devil's Rejects here, I really love this film. And this is uh, probably one of the only really good horror films to come out of uh, the last recent uh, couple of years. Now to move on to Dog Soldiers here, which uh, I got him hit. <laughs> it is uh, pretty close to being my favorite werewolf film. Uh... It's another survival horror style film. The film doesn't is not really really original, I would say. I mean, there's not really anything really original to it besides the idea of like the werewolves. 
uh, like uh, attacking the people. I don't, I don't really think there's been any other survival horror film that's used the werewolves and the enemies that the people have to fight. But in the film, it's a bunch of sh uh, soldiers who are basically like stranded in this uh, fucking house, and they gotta take on these werewolves. And the werewolves, I like the, I like the practical suits and the people in the suits or whatever in the way they are. And it's like, I think they actually got the people like on stilts to make the, uh, the werewolves look extremely tall. Uh, and just like the idea of it of like the werewolves trying to break in and the military men like you know, trying to defend themselves and blow the fuck out of them is just highly entertaining and I think the characters are really entertaining in the film and just like with them shooting the fuck out of the werewolves and the machine guns and everything I just uh, survival horror is a genre where you can't really uh, you can't really fuck it up I mean unless you're just like don't have any idea what you're doing or how to make a fun survival horror film I mean Survival horror is kind of a simple idea. Just take a bunch of people, put them in a situation where they have to survive the night and make it past some uh, unstoppable enemy and make it really fun. And I think this film succeeds at that. Just with the neat werewolf idea of them like trying to kill every motherfucker inside, of, uh, which is at, actually the soldiers are inside the werewolf's own house. Uh, but just the idea of like uh, taking a uh, survival horror idea and pinning, them, uh, and pinning these soldiers up against the werewolves uh, is just a really fun idea. I keep hearing about a sequel to this movie. Uh, apparently, it doesn't seem like it's ever going to come about, but this is another film that I think uh, I would like to see a sequel to. Um, to do a sequel to this film, though, you'd probably... there's I don't know how you could... I mean, I don't know what you would do story-wise. You could probably do just like another survival horror-type style story, just uh, kind of a similar style story in the same kind of like style, uh, but in like a different setting or a different place but with werewolves again, but add some slightly new elements. You could do that, and it would probably turn out to be really fun. I don't think it would be as good as this movie because um, despite the fact of uh, even the, of the sequel even using the similar ideas and adding new ideas or whatever, it's just that this is such a simple idea that once it's used once and used really well like it is in this film with the, with the idea of soldiers versus werewolves, um, there's not really much more you can uh, really do with that idea, I don't think. At least not enough to where you can make it anywhere near as as, uh, as fresh as this film. But as far as this film goes, I think it's extremely fun. I wouldn't really say it's scary, but it's just a lot of fun. And definitely, if you're a fan of survival horror, I definitely recommend that you should check this out. Because this film is just a blast. And uh, I'm a sucker for any, for any kind of horror film where it's a group of people trying to survive the night against a supernatural, unstoppable enemy. Now we jump in here with my personal favorite, A Nightmare on Elm Street sequel. I don't think this is the best A Nightmare on Elm Street sequel, but I do think this one is the most fun. This film, I just love this film. It's another film, once again, that I grew up watching as a kid. Uh, well, this was the one that, this was the one in the franchise that I watched the most, just because it's so much fun. I love the rock soundtrack to it, the great uh, 80s rock soundtrack, and just the character of Alice. As, I, as I've said in my own review for the film, if you want a more in-depth talk about the film, check out my review, but as I've said in my own review of the film, uh, I've always identified with the character of Alice much more than any other character in the franchise, which automatically has made me, you know, closer to this film, you know, personally. But as for the film itself, just like the, the Freddy kills in this film, I think are really good, except for maybe Rick's death, which is lacking a little. Um, but other than that, uh, this is, uh, also has Freddy Krueger's best death in the entire franchise at the end of it, with him being ripped apart by the very souls that he's absorbed, which is by far the coolest way and the best way that the character could, could go out. I honestly think that uh, this franchise should have stopped at three, but part four will always be my personal favorite, and I'm... Even though I think it should have ended with three, I'm really glad they made four. Um, if not ending at three, I really think the franchise should have stopped here. I really think this was a high way or a high point for the character of Freddy to go out. Despite the film not being as good as part three, I think the film was just so much fun and had the best death of Freddy Krueger by far out of the entire franchise. That this was this was uh, this film was not as good as three, but it's a much cooler way cooler way for the character of Freddy to die in the franchise by being ripped apart by the very spirits of the children that he's absorbed with the Elm Street children getting kind of getting their revenge back up on back on Freddy or getting their revenge on Freddy, I mean, and him getting his comeuppance. It's just a much more epic way for the character to go out than the way he went out in part three, in my opinion. Uh, and this film is just a blast to watch. Like I've said, from the rock and soundtrack to just the, the characters, this film has uh this film has my favorite cast in it, the most likable characters, in my opinion, of the franchise are in this film. The characters are just really likable in this film. Uh, from the character of Rick, especially to the character of Alice, which is my favorite heroine in the entire franchise. 
uh, Nancy taking a close second. I pick Alice over Nancy because I feel more closer to her uh, as a person. And, well, yeah, personally, I feel more closer to her. Um, but And just Robert England, he's just, you can tell he's having a blast here in this film. He seems like he's having more fun here in this film than any of the other films in the franchise that he worked on just because he gets so much screen time in this film. And this is definitely the one where Freddy becomes the... Uh, the icon and the hero of the franchise, but despite that fact, I still think the character is intimidating in the film, and the one-liners are, are still hold up really well and are not as bad as they would later become in Dream Child and, and uh, fucking uh, especially Freddy's Dead. But uh, I still think the one-liners, even though there's even though there's more of them here than there were in Dream Warriors, they're still really funny and funny as fuck and entertaining as fuck. And despite the film not being like really scary, Freddy is still intimidating. Not being scary at all, really, I'd say. But Freddy is still intimidating. Um, and uh, he's still not treated as a joke. The character may make jokes in this film, but he doesn't seem like a joke like he would in the later films. Um, and despite the fact that this is the film where Freddy takes over pretty much as the lead, uh, at least it's done in a way to where it's extremely fun. And it's just, a, I think this is just a great film to watch. And once again, to say it again, this is the popcorn of Nightmare on Elm Street film. I said that in my review for the film, but just to say that again, this is the popcorn Nightmare on Elm Street film. And this is also another film that benefits from getting a few beers. <laughs> Not because the film's bad or anything, but a few beers are always fun. And popping out some popcorn and watching this motherfucker with a couple of friends... Because despite the fact of whether they like a Nightmare on Elm Street movies or not, I think this film right here will appeal to more people than just Elm Street fans just because it's just so much fun. And it's uh, it's definitely the one with the most action, in my opinion. The final alone of the film consists of a, a fucking duke amount between Alice and Freddy that, in my opinion, is worthy of a lot of action films and maybe even some kung fu films. But yeah, just to finish off with Dream Master here, this is the most fun film in the series, in my opinion. Um... And definitely the, and definitely in my opinion, uh, one of the coolest looking films in the franchise. And if you're gonna watch any of the Nightmare on Elm Street films, I say definitely watch the first four. And my opinion, after the first four, the films just start getting shittier and shittier after that until a new nightmare comes along. Now we're back here with Dream Warriors, which is another Freddy Krueger film. Uh, this film, along with Part Four, were the two I watched the most as a kid out of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. And these were the two I enjoyed the most. Uh, I guess what I really what really appeals to me in these two films is that it's uh, instead of one person fighting Freddy, uh, it's like a group of people fighting Freddy, and the characters are just like really charismatic and have a, and have, a, have just like a really fucking great energy to them. I think in both films, I think both all all the sets of characters in this film and in the next film, Dream Master, both have really great characteristics to them and are just really fun to watch. Uh, I believe this was Patricia Arquette's first film, and she's uh, really entertaining in this film. You can see, like, the signs that she's going to be a really good actor when she gets older. Uh, my one disappointment, or, or, well, when she does more films anyway, that she would just, you know, get even better at her acting. Not to say that her acting's bad in this film, because she really does hold her own. But uh, my one, just one of my disappointments in the next film, Dream Master, was that they couldn't get Patricia Arquette back. I do think that was a slight loss for Part 4. And I do think this film is better than Part 4, but I enjoy Part 4 more on a personal level. And I find Part 4 more entertaining than, more entertaining than this film, but I do think this film is better written. This film is really good. This is the film that paved the way, though, for Freddy to get more into the mainstream, which I don't really mind and I do think was the right way for the franchise to go. But I do think it weakened the character at the same time. I really don't think you could have done a sequel more similar to Part 2 or Part 1 after Part 2. And I think if you did, that the franchise would probably have died out. And I do think that this film was the right way to go for the time, despite the fact that it brought Freddy more into the mainstream and gave him more spotlight. Uh, at least it did it in a really classy way, and at least all his jokes were funny as fuck and really entertaining. Like, especially the best line in the entire franchise, Welcome to Primetime Bitch, which only Robert England can do that line justice. I'm not even going to attempt it. But uh, just that line alone uh, and the, the dream sequence of Freddy coming to life as a fucking puppet in this movie is just so entertaining. And this film, along with Part 4, I think make great back-to-back -back double feature. Um, this film, Part 4, and then Dream Child are pretty are pretty much considered the dream trilogy of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Um, those are the three I like to watch, like, in a triple feature, even though part five is pretty fucking weak and pretty bad. Part three and four, I think, are highly entertaining. Um, and even though I like to watch them as a trilogy, more than often than not, uh, I usually just watch three and four just because they're so entertaining. 
And the, one of the things I really love about this film is not just how good it is, but how uh, much fun it is to just watch this back to back with part four. But the characters in this film are really entertaining, and it's the first time we get a group of people actually fighting Freddy. And the idea of people using dream powers to battle Freddy, which is, uh, which uh, he's pretty much the quinta, quintessential dream demon. So having a group of characters that can battle Freddy with their own dream powers, uh, just what elevates this film to being like more magical than part two and part one, but being at the same time more entertaining and just a lot more fun than part two. And I also think it's much better written than part two. Despite the fact I don't hate the second one, I truly do think that this film right here was the right direction to go with for the second film. I mean, after the second film, uh, I really don't think the franchise would have lasted longer if uh, another sequel would have been done similar to part two or part one. But I love this film to death, and it's just so much fun to watch. Uh, the only thing I think that weakens it a little is some of the dream powers are a little corny. But other than that, just the fun of it and just seeing Freddy actually battle people that might be able to actually do something against him um, just elevates this film so high on my list of my favorite horror films that I watch this film probably like once every couple of months just because I get such a blast out of it. Now we're kicking it in here with uh, fucking Evil Dead 2. Uh, this is one. This is one of my favorite sequels of all time. I would have included Army of Darkness in this list, but I don't really consider Army of Darkness a horror movie. It's more of like an adventure fantasy film than it is a horror movie. But if it was a list of like my top favorite films of all time instead of my top horror films, then yes, Army of Darkness would have been included in the list. But as it is, Evil Dead Two. I love Evil Dead Two. Um, it's uh, more jokey than the first movie. The comedy is more like apparent than it was in the first movie. I prefer Evil Dead 1 to Evil Dead 2. I like the more straight up scariness of Evil Dead 1, but I will agree that I like the version of Ash in Evil Dead 2 better than the version of him in the first movie. I prefer the kick ass uh, version of Ash for when he starts to develop more of like his uh, uh, his personality that he's more known for. Um, I really enjoy this film. I love the scene where, where Bruce Campbell, like his fucking hand gets possessed and he's, he's getting the shit beat out of him by his own hand. That's just really great acting by Bruce Campbell. Who is a uh, is one of the best horror actors uh, that I have seen, or in my opinion, exists. Uh, he's just terrific uh, with his hand movements and just like the lines he gets, like when he fucking kills the monster at the end of it, and it's like I swallow your soul, I swallow your soul, and he goes swallow this. Just that line alone just adds to the coolness and epicness of this movie. Um, I love this film. I can't say I, there's not really much more I can say about this film. That because this film is highly regarded in the horror community, and most of the things I can say about this film that I liked are pretty much what everyone else has said. I do think the comedy in this film is done really well, and is a lot of fun, and is extreme. I do think this film is funny as fuck. When it wants to be, it is funny as fuck. Uh, like with Bruce Campbell chasing after his hand, and it running away, and all that shit, and him shooting at it, and he shoots a hole in the wall, and he gets like sprayed to fucking hell and back with like a, a gallon of blood coming out of the wall. That's fucking hilarious, and another scene I really love in this film that automatically makes this film one of my faves is when, like, the fucking deer head looks at him and starts laughing its ass off, like, at him, and then everything in the whole fucking cabin starts laughing, and then he starts laughing, too, from, like, the fact that he's going insane uh, from just all the crazy shit because the, 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 uh, the fucking evil in the woods keeps fucking with him, uh, and so he just finally snaps and starts laughing, too along with, like, everything in the cabin laughing at the same time. And that right there, that just that scene alone just elevates this film to one of my favorites. And I love this film. And the Evil Dead trilogy is just one franchise that I wish, I really wish, would get a fourth film. Uh, but it doesn't seem like, it just seems like Sam Raimi is just isn't interested in really doing a fourth Evil Dead film, even though I would love to get one. I really don't think we're ever going to get one. But if we, I mean, I would be extremely fucking surprised if we ever got an Evil Dead 4. And even if we don't, to be honest, I'm fine with the films as a trilogy as they are. But part of me will always, will always be in, I mean, there will always be a part of me that would just love to see Bruce Campbell have one more go around with the fucking forces of darkness. Now we're here with my favorite horror film of all time. Uh, this is my number one favorite horror film, Evil Dead. I love this film. It's debatable whether it's the best horror film of all time, but for me, it's my favorite. Uh, this film rules. It's, uh, it's still scary. I think it still holds up scare wise. I think, uh, and just like the this, just this film uh, in general is just so awesome with a great performance by Bruce Campbell. And the only problems I have with the film is that Bruce Campbell's character gets like took down a little bit too easy a bunch of times in the film. 
uh, before he finally mans up as the last person left um, at the end of the film. He kind of like gets knocked into the same shelf like twice, I think. And that he uh, he keeps having a problem with that shelf. <laughs> like he can't fucking get up despite the fact that the shelf doesn't look like it weighs much at all. So that's one of my only problems with the film. Um, but I love this film. I get such a kick out of it. The, this is Sam Raimi back in his you know, golden days as far as I'm concerned. Uh, despite the fact that I am a comic book fan, uh, as far as Sam Raimi's films goes, nothing in his film career for me will ever top his Evil Dead trilogy. Um, I can't stress how enough how much I love this film and just the character of Ash in general and how much fun it is to watch him evolve from film to film. This film is my favorite of the three Evil Dead films or, or the Evil Dead trilogy because it's the it's the it's the Evil Dead idea in its purest form and it's straight up horror. It's got a little bit of comedy element like to it, like uh, here and there, but it's mo mostly a straight up horror film. Um, and that's what I like about it the most. Despite the fact that I'm a big fan of Evil Dead 2, some of the comedy was just a little much for me in Evil Dead 2. Uh, so in my opinion, this film is the superior film. And I like the fact, it's just, it's just, I think, also a tighter script in this film. I loved Evil Dead 2, but uh, up, in, uh, up until the point when the other uh, characters showed up, I would have preferred Evil Dead 2 just to, just to have been Ash by himself for the entire film. Instead of uh, having other characters show up. So that's... Uh, so I, I do prefer Evil Dead 1 to Evil Dead 2, but I still really enjoy Evil Dead 2 as well. But, uh, yeah, just to focus on this film, this film is fantastic. It's uh, one of the best horror films ever made, in my opinion. Um, and just, like, the, the, the scenes in the film with fucking, uh, like, uh, when one of the characters first gets possessed and she jumps around and, like, one of her char one of the other girls is, like, trying to uh, guess, like, what cards uh, Ash's girlfriend is, like, has in her hands. And uh, the one that's possessed like starts going Jack of Spades, uh, Two of Clubs, or some shit like that. And she like fucking jumps around and she's possessed. Uh, it's a really epic scene, and I love the scene. It's just fucking freaky as shit. And another scene I really love in the film is like when the people who are possessed like are start fucking with Ash, and his girlfriend is like uh, singing, like fucking with him, and she's like, "We're gonna get you, not another peep. Time to go to sleep." This film is just so fucking entertaining, and I do think the scariness of it still holds up today. And just the perform performance of uh, of Ash in the film, of I mean, of Bruce Campbell, is just great to watch. I do think, I do like his performance better in Evil Dead 2 than in this film. I think it is a better, uh, I, well, I'm not really sure which performance is better, since it's been a little while since I've seen both films back to back. But I just prefer the version of Ash in the second film more over over the version of this film. I like how the character grows from Evil Dead 1 to 2 to Army of Darkness, though. Um, but uh, I do prefer the version of Ash from the second film to the version of him in this film. And this film is more just like an average guy who's just like trying to survive to the, to the second film to where he becomes pretty much uh, the, uh, the hero. Uh, but I do like that transition from film to film, though. But as far as it goes for this film, I love this film. Uh, this is Evil Dead in its purest form for me. Sh uh, straight up horror with just like little tiny uh, hints at comedy. Um, and the, just the scariness of it, I think, still holds up today. And just uh, just the simple idea of it, of just a group of friends going to a cabin and uh, unleashing a demon in the woods. And this film has like one of the most fucked up scenes in horror film history with a fucking tree raping somebody. And just the, that right there alone in this film is enough, in my opinion, to get people to check this film out. Just to see like one of the most fucked up scenes in film history. Now we're in Friday the 13th territory here. Uh, or Jason Voorhees territory, whichever you want to call it. Uh, I love this film. This is one of my, easily one of my favorite Friday the 13th films. Uh, it's a, this film is a blast to watch. Uh, Jason just seems overly pissed off in this film. Or especially pissed off in this film, and he ain't fucking around in the film. You get great kills, plus you get Crispin Glover in the film, which is really cool, and Corey Feldman as well. So it's like a bonus. So you you get that, plus a really cool Jason in the film. This uh, this Jason, uh, I would say, uh, this version of Jason would probably be my second favorite after the Kane Hodder, Jason. I love this version of Jason. Um, just like his movements and like his pissed off attitude are just terrific in my opinion and just the way that uh, uh, that he's played in this film just echoes coolness and the way that Jason dies at the end of this film is so final that this film could have been the final chapter and I, w I would have been fine with that and I think a lot of fans would have been fine with that and to be honest you really didn't need any more films after this one 
but you know I'm still glad you know that the character got to carry on. But if the fa if the franchise had to stop somewhere, I would have rather it uh, rather it was stopped here. This is much more of a fitting end to the character than uh, Jason X. Despite the fact that I do like the idea of like Jason X of like him getting uh like him kind of like it starting with the lake and returning to the lake at the end of Jason X. But this is still a much more fitting end for the character of Jason. And just the coolness of having Corey Feldman and Crispin Glover in the same fucking movie just adds to the awesomeness of this film. And Crispin Glover's dance alone in this film is just epic enough for me to rank this film high on my list of favorites, despite the fact that this uh, list is not in order. Um, but yeah, this film just rules. Uh, I would say if you're a Friday 13th fan, you've already seen this film. But if you haven't, uh, if you're a newcomer to Friday 13th, uh, definitely watch this one. If you watch any of them, make sure you watch this one, I would say. Because this film is just such a blast to see. Um, and plus it has, uh, plus it has twins and it two twin chicks, so I'm sure you guys will love that. But, uh, that combined with, uh, Crispin Glover and Corey Feldman and just the fun of this movie and, uh, the way Jason acts in this film and just with the awesomeness of the way Jason is played just brings this film up to being, like, one of the coolest fucking things in the entire franchise. Um, it's definitely one of the, not just one of the coolest Jason films I've seen, but also one of my favorite slashers, or in my opinion, one of the one of the best slashers I've seen as well. The makeup effects by Tom Savini alone in the film with some of the kills are just brutal. Like when he twists the guy's head completely around at the morgue. That, ju that just awesomeness. This movie is just caked in so much awesomeness. And with the death of Jason at the end with his own machete, it's just the cherry on the top.